Hello, everybody. It's Chris Mohan. Welcome to another road reflection. Doing it again in the car. That's where that's where it's happening. We're back to the old, the old old classic, the the original style of the road reflections, uh, where it's just me in the car talking about some of the stories that uh, <clears throat> you know won't won't particularly get covered by mainstream media all the time and getting kind of deeper into some of uh, important topics of discussion. It's what we're going to do for the next little bit. Um, I've mentioned this before. I've kind of changed the uh, format of how I'm releasing videos every single week. I know I've done that a few times over the course of this summer and you know, with every uh, sort of life change that occurs, I have to adjust my schedule accordingly to make sure that I'm keeping up to date on all of the all the stories that are coming out, all the news stuff that's coming out. So uh, basically, on Mondays you'll get the you'll get your fork full of noodles every single Monday, uh, eight thirty. Um, I'll talk about what happened with this week's in just a second. Uh, because it does kind of tie into one of the things that were uh, that I want to talk about, uh, and then on uh, on Thursdays I'll release a new taboo table talk, and I've got some pretty 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 cool interviews lined up for you guys over the next couple weeks. Uh, Friday will be a new dispatch, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to be releasing too much on the weekends. Uh, just kind of taking the weekends off because. What's also going to happen on Fridays is the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Those happen on Fridays as well. Um, and as I'm releasing these videos and promoting them throughout the week, I'm also writing and researching and putting together this entire show, this brand new show, every single week. <clears throat> so I'm basically writing, um, you know, a new hour to an hour and a half about a particular topic. Uh, every single week so so sometimes the weekends I'm just gonna kind of take as the weekends I, I I haven't had a you know uh, like weekends off uh, in a very very long time uh, because yeah you know, as you know being a comedian means that you work on the weekends it's kind of your thing you you, you you do a thing you, you do your thing on uh, on the weekends there so uh, so that and, and so throughout the week, uh, I'll probably drop one or two of these road reflections, and they'll be looser, they'll be rantier. Sometimes they'll they'll include multiple different stories, and I'll clip them up and put them up <coughs> at separate uh, videos as well. And I'm also working on getting some of these video interviews I have uh, from Taboo Table Talk and putting them up on my channel and clipping them out and all that sort of stuff. So. Uh, you know, some changes coming to the channel, some additional content coming to the channel. Um, all good things, but they, they will take a little bit of time for me to get to because uh, I am the only person on my staff, which means that I'm doing all of the research, the writing, the videography, the video editing, the audio editing, uh, the promotional material, the emailing, all of that kind of stuff. So... Uh, it's a lot of work for one person to do, and I kind of, you know, I, I, I kind of do it. And I've been doing it for years. So, uh, you know, be patient with, uh, with some of the changes coming to the channel. Uh, and I appreciate you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button um, and uh, share this out. Tell some people about it. Uh, if you're particularly sick of the, the Facebook and YouTube um Censorship and bullshittery that happens there. Uh, you know, go go check out my Rockfin page at rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, it's the same content. It's a freemium model. It's a bit of a freemium model, uh, which means some of the videos I release are going to be uh, for premium members that subscribe for 10 bucks a month. Um, and, uh, you know, but a lot of the videos are, are available for free. Uh, and, you know, you get... If you, if you subscribe, you get videos from every single creator on Rockfin, which includes myself, Ron Placone, Graham Elwood, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore. Uh, there's a ton of people on, on Rockfin putting, putting some quality, quality material out. 
<clears throat> but yeah, so those are some of the changes coming to the channel. I also want to apologize if uh, if I don't sound awesome. I'm dealing with the with some odd sinus problems and with the weather changing and my allergies kind of kicking in. Uh, my throat's been uh, acting up a little bit, and you know, uh, there's it, it's it's phlegmy. That's that's the that's the word for it. There is uh, it's phlegmy. <clears throat> So my throat, I've been, I've been, I woke up coughing this morning pretty intensely. Uh, I had to go get some medication for, uh, for that. And I got, I got one of those, um, syrups. I get, it's like a liquid, you know, I haven't done like a liquid cough thing in a long time. Uh, and I was reading the bottle and one of the things it said it does is, um, what did it say? It said it makes, uh, more productive coughs, more productive coughs. Very interesting choice of words there, where it's just like, boy, I, I, I coughed and I got my taxes done. Holy shit! It's a pretty, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good medication. I coughed and put, uh, folded all my laundry while I was coughing. That's amazing. What an, what an, uh, what an amazing, uh, what an amazing liquid medication this is. I coughed and I, you know, changed my baby's diaper. And I, I built a TV stand, all while coughing. This is incredible. What, what productive coughs I'm having these days. I just thought that was fucking weird. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I've, I've taken that medication. It's an ex, expirant, I think is the right word, uh, or expectorant or something like that. Basically, it just makes, like, the, the phlegminess go away. Like, it makes your cough, like... It loosens everything up so that, you know, when you cough, like, stuff actually comes up, uh, which is kind of what I needed. I think it's called expectorant. Uh, so that's why if I sound funny or congested or not awesome <clears throat> or clear my throat a bunch, that's why. Just heads up there. Uh, but there, the couple stories that I want to get to... First and foremost, um, I, I do I do want to uh, say that uh, you know this weekend we lost uh, uh, a pretty incredible activist and journalist and publisher. Uh, we lost Kevin Zees to an unfortunate heart attack. Um, you know that that was pretty sad. Uh, I mean, it's incredibly sad news, and I feel. Um, you know all the all the condolence and love sent to Margaret, Dr. Margaret Flowers, his partner, and um, all the folks that worked with Kevin at Popular Resistance and the Green Party and everything. And um, I didn't know Kevin personally, but I, I know a lot of people that did know Kevin personally, uh, from Lee Camp to Eleanor Goldfield. You know, um, I, I I only had one opportunity to talk to to Kevin. Um, uh, he, and uh, you know the I, I had him on my podcast, and I, I'm sure some of you uh, have heard that episode. And I would uh, encourage you guys to uh, go back and, um, and 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 listen to that episode again because he is um, genuinely a uh, a wealth of a wealth of knowledge and a very passionate person. Uh, it, it, it was it was an honor to just be able to talk to him, and it almost didn't even happen because I fucked up, right? Like, and Kevin was so very, he was very kind and cool about the fact that like I monumentally fucked up and took up an additional like hour of his time that I'm sure he didn't have, and like I'm not fucking famous or anything like that, so the fact that he took the time. Um, to continue to do the podcast, even though I had fucked up, like I basically screwed up the time. I told him we would do the podcast at 11:30, and then I needed to change it to one, but I forgot to email him, and I was in the middle of this therapy appointment. I'm getting these phone calls from Kevin, and I was like, "What's happening?" And then I, you know, immediately realized what had happened, um, and I called him back, and I was like, "Hey, 
blah, blah, blah. And he was like, hey, yeah, that's cool. I totally understand. Like, it happens. Uh, yeah, I can, I can, you know, like, I'm, I'm free till this time and uh, we can make it happen. And he was very, very cool about uh, my major fuck up. So my heart goes out to Dr. Market Flowers. I know they're doing something on Saturday um, virtually. Uh, and, you know, uh, Popular Resistance, uh, which I highly recommend people go check out and read, popularresistance.org. Uh, I've used them several times. They're a, a, a valuable and wonderful source uh, for, for all of uh, but my, my writings, my videos, and my comedy and stuff. A uh, lot of stuff on Venezuela. I learned a lot of stuff about the post office through their site. Uh, a lot of stuff about electoral politics. So it is, it is a, you know, it's with a heavy heart that, that, that the, I, I, I address this situation because it is, it is very sad uh, to lose someone as, um, as big as Kevin, you know. So, uh, yeah, rest, re- rest in power. The um, the other thing I wanted to bring up here, and uh, I know I'm a little late on this. I know I'm a little late on this, uh, but uh, I did want to talk about the People's Convention because I got to see a majority of the People's Convention. It was like five hours long. Um, I'll say this, I definitely watched way more of the People's Convention than I did either the Democratic or the fucking Republican Convention. Uh, The travesty of that. Plus, a lot of my friends were there. Uh, Ron Placone was on it, Graham Elwood was on it, Eleanor Goldfield did a piece. Uh, You know, Nick's Nick's great, Nick's done my podcast a couple times, Nick Brana talked about the People's Party a couple times on my podcast, so... uh, I, I, I know about I've, I've known about them for quite some time and to, to see the momentum build up especially um, especially after I think what happened in March with Tulsi's endorsement of Joe Biden and Bernie's endorsement of Joe Biden uh, I think something like this needed to happen where you know a lot of a lot of people were feeling hopeless including myself in terms of electoral politics. I, I still kind of feel mildly hopeless. I'm more cynical and jaded about electoral politics being the way to kind of solve anything. I, I, I don't think that's the that's going to be the uh, the smoking gun. It's a part of the solution. It's not the solution. I think a lot of people think that it's the solution that. Once we get Trump out of office, everything will will be hunky dory, and um, that's just not true. Especially if you pay attention to how the state of electoral politics has worked over the last you know 30, 40 years. And Joe Biden has been a part of that. He's he is a part of the establishment politics uh, that that is that is that has brought us to where we are. That has led to the the, the rise of Donald Trump. Uh, and 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 there there's no one in the Democratic Party willing to, you know, um, say anything like that. That hey, you know, we we made some bad calls, uh, and it led to this really bad thing. Uh, and if they would, I think a lot more people would still be a uh, a part of that party. But they are. They're not, uh, and, and there's a lot of vitriol from, from mainstream Democrats uh, on the voter level that, uh, I, that I know I face a lot. Uh, so, you know, the People's Convention was something that wh- when, I, when I heard about it, I, w- I was rather excited about it. And, you know, the, it, it was initially only going to be like two hours, but then they added a bunch more speakers and it became a much larger event. And they did it virtually. Um, Without, you know, they didn't need the bells and whistles because it's a people's party. They're not funded by corporations. They're not funded by the, 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 the big news networks and uh, all, all of that stuff. They're, they're funded by regular average people, and that's what they're trying to build. They're, they're trying to build a party that is going to be representative of the people. And 
if you look at a lot of their um, a lot of their policies, a lot of the ideas that they support, a lot of the things that they want to put forward out there. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a socialist labor party. It's kind of what we need. You know, you 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 have two major corporate parties in this country that have essentially like eviscerated the the American working class. So, what we need is a party that is going to bring them up. And they're and they're not running a candidate in 2020 um, because that's unrealistic, and they know that. So their goal is to get candidates for um, local and maybe state level uh, positions. You know, maybe some city council members, a mayor, governor, uh, maybe all the way up to Congress by 2022, which I think is doable, and and then in 2024 be able to run a viable presidential candidate. Uh, and before everybody, you know, pisses on this idea because you're a mainstream Democrat and it's a, and and you need the duopoly to be the duopoly. I would uh, very much encourage you to go check out my video on the election system, on electoral politics, on this bashing of third parties, um, and just hear me out on it. Um, Give it a listen. Give yourself an hour. Or fuck it. If you don't want to find it, because I know people are lazy about that shit, shoot me a message and I'll send you a link to that podcast. Because we've done this shit before. We've had viable third parties in this country before uh, that people agreed with in the early 20s that were far more to the left than the Democratic Party and definitely far more to the left than the fucking Republican Party. So this this idea of starting a new party um, and slowly building this thing up and introducing these progressive ideas that we very much need is not something that is new and crazy. It's very much done, has been done before. In fact, the Republican Party came out of being a third party and now is a, is a prominent corporate party. Um, so, you know, I address a lot of the history behind it. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy after the People's Convention because they did not mention Julian Assange. And, you know, I, I don't like the infighting within within sort of the progressive circles uh and and some of the critiques were coming from people that I know and I'm friends with and you know that I that I like uh that that are that are good folks doing good things and they're pro they're 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 major like Assange activists and part I think part of the issue was also having uh someone like Ryan Knight who was rather neoliberal and, you know, mainstream Democrat um, until this recent primary and has kind of switched over to being a little bit, being more more socialist and, um, you know, he was a booster of Bernie and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, people change and uh, I, I would hope that you can accept the change. I know there's a lot of people that are a little bit more cynical about that sort of stuff of, kind of the, the, the wolves in sheep clothing and, and I understand that I, I understand that we should be wary about those things um, and we should and we should but you know I, I, I think for him to uh, to be as openly socialist and take all the attacks that he takes and I've been there because I, I face some of the same attacks probably on the lesser level because I'm I'm not as 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 big as as Ryan. Um, it's not. I mean, you you don't willingly just take that shit to take that shit. Like, you really have to believe in what you believe in in order for for you to take the amount of shit that comes towards you. And you know, with with Assange's trial moving to the states, and I believe today is the first day 
or today's when it's getting moved. Uh, I can't remember the exact details. But with that happening, it's... They did make a statement about it today. They did make a statement about it at the People's Convention. And, yeah, I, I, I think that's not awesome. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they are ignoring Assange. Um, they have made they have made pro Assange statements. They are on on the side of Julian Assange and on the side of of, of, of free press and uh, against censorship and all that kind of stuff. So, but the People's Convention, I think, was more about bringing a group of people that don't exactly believe in the in the same things. And saying, hey, you know, politics doesn't have to be as divisive as what it is. And uh, you can have deferring opinions and we can value those things. Those things can be an asset rather than a, uh, a problem, a weakness for, for the party, right? And, and we can give people a little bit more... Um, but, you know, really a, a progressive platform, really listen to what the people have to say and uh, go from there. So they, I don't think they mentioned Assange because that was sort of the, the spirit of it. Now, I understand, like, I know there have been some people that are like, well, it, Assange shouldn't be a, a political topic. And sure, but it, it has become a political topic. What to do with Julian Assange has become a, a, a very political topic to people. It, it to, to a lot of progressives, including myself, I, I, I do want a candidate to have an opinion on Assange. Uh, and, you know, the only one that in, in my, what, what I saw in the primaries that had an opinion on Assange that I lined up with was Tulsi Gabbard, who basically said that she would pardon him and Snowden and Chelsea Manning and, uh, you know, like champion whistleblowers and he, they're, words instead of now she kind of veered away from a lot of that stuff and uh, I mean she is on again it's like Twitter platitudes uh, talking about Assange and all that but she's also been pro contact tracing which is kind of weird um, especially when you're like I want to heed the word of what people like Edward Snowden are going to say and um I'm, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm not quoting there, but yeah, it's a it's a little it's a little strange, you know. But I do want to know, like like Joe Biden basically called him a a cyber terrorist or some shit like that, and it's like yeah, man. I I think anybody that has like the newest version of the iPad is a cyber terrorist to you. Like you 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 don't understand how technology works at all and you know like you're one of those guys that are like back in my day a calculator was a big deal like you're you're that guy uh so you know maybe fuck off on this like i'm not going to support him on that regard i don't think donald trump has a great view on julian assange trying to think if anybody oh and then Andrew Yang and I got a lot of shit he basically said that he would he would uh send him to trial which which is what's happening now uh, you know so I guess I guess Andrew got got his thing for what he would want to do with, with about Julian Assange and um this is the, I, you know it's just it's just not a fair fair trial anyway so so I'll I, I'll, I'll get into Assange a little later in the week but, um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I hate the, in, I, I don't like to see the infighting because, because I do think that the, the pro Assange folks, um, that, you know, currently are in DC and doing really good work and, and the people's party, I think can work together rather than, uh, be at each other's throats about this stuff because, you know, I, 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 there, there was a bunch of issues that really didn't get addressed, um, in the people's convention like I don't think anybody talked about like vertical farming uh, and 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 like uh, alternative you know farming or, or uh, anything about like uh, universal education or immigration reform or anything like that it, it, again it's like 
I think they were just trying to get people excited about the the fact that there is something different out there um and it doesn't have to be so polarizing uh i think there's a lot of times where people get stuck because it's because things get polarizing and they and they don't like politics so you can be a libertarian socialist or you could just be a regular old fucking socialist or you could be just a liberal and you know you're open to trying new ideas but you don't really claim the label of, of socialist, but you can join the movement for a People's Party because you believe that people should be treated better. That's possible. You're, you're a progressive. You were a democratic socialist. You were what have you, right? The, the, the whole point is that they wanted people to come together and, and kind of really point out the, the issues with the system. And I think they did. Uh... It, you know, just because something wasn't mentioned in the convention doesn't mean that uh, they don't believe in it anymore. But, yeah, I would, I would have liked to see a little bit more about certain policies. And, but, you know, that's, that's why they have the, the weekly calls that they do and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, peoplesparty.org. Go check it out. I've talked about them a bunch. I did a whole big video about them. I have had Nick on my podcast a couple times. You can go listen to that or message me and I'll send you these links or however you want to fucking do that. Um, yeah, I just, I think we need to be a little bit more unified over, over, over on the left. Uh, so, but, uh, there is a, a little bit of good news to, to, uh, as the final story for, um, for the day, uh, it, and uh, and that is that a federal court, I believe it's the Ninth Circuit, a federal court has said that uh, what the NSA did, what Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA did, the, the illegal data collection and spying on the American people was, in fact, illegal. So what they did was a crime. And the NSA has come out and, you know, said things like, well, we're not... We're not doing that anymore, so it's so we're fine. Everything is okay. We're not really doing that anymore. And it's like, oh yeah, but you've just kind of switched over to doing a bunch of other crazy, fucking, warrantless, wiretapping bullshit. You know, and and also like, when criminals say that sort of stuff, when people that, you know, are convicted of certain crimes and they're and it's like 10 years later that they that they get caught and it's just like yeah I'm not doing that stuff anymore they still go to prison they still have to go to prison for what what they did 10 years ago so uh you know I I feel like the NSA should be penalized for for that especially now that a court is saying that what they're doing is illegal and big and the bigger thing too, I think we should notify. Notify? Ah, oh, this fucking medication. Uh, the bigger thing I think we should take note of is uh, that Edward Snowden does not need to be exiled in Russia anymore. And I'm, I, you know, I'm I'm going to release a video about this next week about how the Obama administration. Uh, did did exile and attack whistleblowers uh, because they did. They were the administration that used the Espionage Act uh, to persecute whistleblowers more than any other administration. And you know, I, um, I I pointed out one of the one of the main things I pointed out was uh, Obama's Attorney General Eric Holder basically said that no, he wouldn't get a fair trial. He would get a sentencing trial. So if he came to the United States, he would just get a sentencing trial. So that's one. The other thing, the other thing to take note of is the fact that um, they canceled his passport because they knew where he was going. Like, they could track where he was going. And in order for him to, like, get into a place where he wouldn't be fucked with, he had to go through Moscow. And the second he landed in Moscow, they canceled his passport. The Obama administration canceled his passport, uh, which sucks, right? That, 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 that really fucking blows. And then it, and then they exiled him. 
they exiled him in Russia. So so he's not in Russia because he wants to be in Russia, right? Like, his life isn't fucking super awesome, like, ice cream and daisies and sunshine all the time. Like, it's... It's difficult. And he had to go through some difficult things... Uh, to get where he is. To, to even, like, have an apartment that he could, like, work off of and give talks to and write his book and all that. So I think... One, I think the Obama administration owes... Uh, Edward Snowden and Assange and Chelsea Manning um, an apology which fucking Obama's not going to do because Obama's big thing is to squash dissent that's what he does Ob- Obama Obama get, gets rid of dissent he's not he's not a champion of the people he's not a champion of You know, like, he's not the hope and change. He is more of the same. He is what Joe Biden is proposing, uh, you know, his administration will be. Uh, It's just more of the same. So, you know, with, 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 with that in mind, I think Obama owes him an apology for sure, which he won't get. Uh, And I think he should be allowed to come home. Without a trial, without a sentence, without any of that shit. I think Edward Snowden deserves to come home at this point. And the other thing, too, that I think we should um, take into consideration is if, if a court rules that what Edward Snowden revealed uh, was, you know, the the... the crimes he revealed were actually crimes let's put it that way because when I first read it I was just like wait did they are they saying that his his whistleblowing is illegal I don't I don't understand what the fuck there's but what, once I read the article I was like oh this makes a lot more sense uh, you know so once we get to that how, what else what else can they say a federal court can decide is illegal What Chelsea Manning revealed, I mean, she revealed a war crime. Julian Assange published it. A federal court could decide that's illegal. And realistically, what's the difference between what the NSA was doing and what was revealed in Vault Vault 7? Uh, For those of you not in the know of what Vault 7 is, Vault 7 basically is... Uh, it revealed that uh, that the CIA was using um, smart technology to to spy on people, basically, and that was a revelation that WikiLeaks revealed to the people. And you know, the the, the question has to be asked: What's the difference between those two things, right? If if uh, if one is illegal, why not the other one? Why not the other one? Um, I think that's that's a fair thing to ask. And, and if a federal court decides that, uh, again, then, you know, this, this whole extradition trial that Julian Assange has been going through for the last um, year and a half now, because that's how long it's been. It's been a year and a half. Uh, would Would basically be counted as bullshit uh, the the US UK extradition treaty wouldn't really apply because he didn't really do anything illegal he did his job I mean he still did his job right like that's what publishers and journalists are supposed to do is they're supposed to like reveal information about things that we need to know about and you know generally start a conversation surrounding it and the you know, the other thing is, like, people are, people will say, like, oh, it's state secrets. Like, oh, he's revealing state secrets. It's state secrets. And it's just like, wait, so war crimes are now state secrets? Shouldn't, shouldn't, I mean, shouldn't you know whether your country is doing the right thing or not? And I feel like killing civilians and journalists is 
100% not doing the right thing. Like, for sure not doing the right thing. So this is a big, I mean, this is a big thing that, you know, was, uh, was decided upon by the courts that, that the NSA illegally spied on people and that it is a crime. What they did was illegal and Edward Snowden revealing it was the right thing to do. So let's, let's see where this goes. I, I do hope that. I don't think he'll get an apology from Obama, right? Uh, which I think he should, uh, but he won't. Um, Obama's kind of a smug jackass now. Like, he's telling NBA players to be like, play the game. Don't don't go on strike. Don't don't stand up for things. Come on. Got to, he basically did what that one Laura Ingram uh, dribbled a ball or whatever. Whatever she... I can't remember exactly what she said. Um... Uh, but she basically, like, was telling, talking about how, like, athletes shouldn't get involved in politics or activism or anything like that. Uh, and I feel like that, I feel like that was Obama's version when he talked to LeBron and was just like, just, uh, you know, play the games. Don't, uh, don't do this activism stuff. You're, you're, you're getting in the way. The new liberal agenda must live on forever. It'll kill everybody else, but it'll live on forever. Play, play, go play the game. Go play the game. Just like last year, he basically told people that were too woke and cancel culture to to stop and, you know, let 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 the people do their work. And it's just like, no, because when we let the bankers do their thing, they kind of fuck people over. They they kind of create the biggest recession and a immense eviction epidemic in the middle of a global pandemic. That's kind of what they do. So I don't think I'll, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting anything from Obama, but uh, I think he should no longer be in exile. I think they should effectively figure out a way to get him home and not commute and not do a fucking commute. I'm, I'm saying total fucking pardon. And here's the thing: if you, if you really want, I mean, if Trump is smart. It's questionable, but but if but I mean if he's really paying attention, like he did tweet out like he doesn't really know much about the Snowden situation, which is just like what? How do you not? What the fuck are you talking about, bro? But uh, yeah, if um, if he's smart, he'll pardon Edward Snowden. If he's smart. Because that will be a huge beacon to the progressive side. That actually, despite a lot of things, um, might get him some some lefty votes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying I will, because I know the rest of his shit, and I know that if he does, it'll it'll kind of be a a ploy to to win votes, not because he actually. Uh, wants to do it, but there might be some lefties that that'll be the that'll be the pass. You know, they're they're sitting on the fence, and they're unsure about what to do, and then Trump pardons Snowden, and Bing Bang Boom. Now you have a bunch of lefties that that you know that that, that don't vote Democratic, that, that vote Republican, because the Republicans would have, in an essence, outlefted the fucking Democrats. So so let's let's see where that goes. It's an interesting turn of events. All right folks, uh I think that is going to be the uh the conclusion of the video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh hanging out uh do, doing all those things. Thank you for being you. Really. Uh but uh if you did enjoy the video, if you do enjoy uh, the content that I'm putting out, make sure you're subscribed uh, wherever you are listening to this. May it be the audio version, may it be on YouTube or on Facebook uh, or uh, on on the Rockfin. Um, 
I, I, I really recommend that if you guys are really sick of the fucking censorship shit, go to Rockfin. And I, I totally forgot to bring this up. But, you know, the video that I put out this week, the Forkful of Noodles that I put out this week, is about the Espionage Act. It's about some of the history behind the Espionage Act, right? And how, like, socialists were, uh, anti-war socialists specifically, were attacked by the Espionage Act. And uh, Facebook fucked up the uploads of it like three or four times and you know I, I, I set up the uploads in advance and the first upload it like uploaded it uploaded twice into one file which is weird and kind of impossible to do uh, unless like unless somehow your video processor fucked up that bad so that was one and and then so I tried to p- put up another thing but only five seconds of that video go up so I had to delete it again and re-upload it a third time. And the third time I did it, it said that the video can't be played. But it's the exact same file that I used to upload to Rockfin, to upload to YouTube, right? So it shouldn't really be having a problem um, with uploading that video. It just seemed so strange and so odd and very unnecessary for it to do. Uh, But and then the fourth time it, it put the video up and someone even like shared the video and um, commented on like, oh, the, you know, the, the original video disappeared. So I'm resharing this new one that got put up and I can't comment because we're not friends or whatever. But, you know, that's why it's because I, I do genuinely feel like I, I, the, the video got censored uh, because of the uh, the words that are that are in uh, the, 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 the video there. So, uh, I, I would say, uh, fuck, fuck the Facebook, fuck the YouTubes, uh, go subscribe to my stuff on Rockfin, rockfin.com slash Chris Mohan. Ha ha. Um, but you know, if you, uh, a- a- everything I do is available right on my website at Chris Mohan, ha ha.com. It's K R I S H M O H A N H A H A.com. Uh, I'm, I'm revamping the site to be a little bit uh, more, a little bit better organized and cleaner. Uh, I've got a, 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 a nicer look to it right now, and, and, I'm, and I'm actively still trying to work on it and update all the pages. I, I ran through quite a bit of trouble with it last week, and it was a, 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 bit, of a bit of a headache, and I'm still kind of running through some of these issues. So um, anyway, uh, so, so, so go there, and you'll see all the videos and podcasts that I'm posting up, and uh, you know, uh, you can sign up for my email list to get up to updates on uh, all the stuff that I post and put out there uh, every single week. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Citizen Revolution live virtual stand up comedy show three times a month. Uh, next one is this Friday, uh, September 11th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are available on my website. You can go and, uh, and check it out. So tickets are only five bucks for one show. And then there's a three show pass and a six show pass. Uh, if you have, to, if you decide that that is a thing that you want to do on most Friday nights, right? I'm, I'm doing them three times a month. Um, so there'll be three shows every single month. And if you get the three or six show pass, you'll basically get uh, a ticket for all the shows in September, or you can get the sh- tickets for all the shows in September and October. Um, so yeah, go, ch- ch- check that out. Um, and other than that, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's all I got for you guys. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and uh, stay well, be safe, and we'll see you on the road.